Hello everybody, welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews. Today we got a beer from Evil Twin Brewing. This is their Anmos, and I'm probably butchering that up, A-U-N with the asterisk over the U and Moss with the asterisk over the A, Cafe or Cafe Jesus. And it's got an asterisk over every word. Uh, so, uh, guys, uh, I did a beer from uh, Evil Twin not too long ago. And... Uh, it was way over carbonated and uh, I was friends with uh, Jeppy the brewer over here that does these beers and he's a vagabond brewer just like his brother McKellar is over in uh, in, uh, in Denmark or wherever over there across the pond and uh, I sent him a little message on Facebook and uh, told him about how over carbonated it was and his response was oh well and that run all over me uh, my OCD uh, chapped my little fat ass so uh, I made a little point in my little book that I wasn't going to buy any more Evil Twin beers. Even though in their bigger beers like this, the, uh, the stronger beers, they do a really good job. Uh, but the, the beer that I had done was not one of those huge beers. And, and his response back to me was uh, a little unsettling. And uh, I probably lost some subscribers over what I said about him. But uh, I'm sticking to my guns. Uh, if you have that kind of... Uh, attitude uh, somebody like me that does beer reviews and you don't give a rat's ass what they think or, or that they got a bad one or an over carbonated one or whatever uh, I'll just spend my money on somebody else's beers that's the way I look at it but this was sent to me by Rico and uh, I do appreciate Rico sending me all the massive beer mail packages he does he he outdoes himself every time he sends me one of these beer mail po uh, boxes so I'm going to review this beer and keep an open mind on it, even though I've got a little disdain for uh, Jeppy and his little uh, organization uh, being a vagabond brewer and his little attitude that he had with me. And I'm going to keep an open mind on this and I'm going to tell you what I think. If it's a great beer, I'm going to tell you it's a great beer. If it's a shitty beer, I'm going to tell you it's a shitty beer. So that's the way it goes. So with that being said, I didn't notice uh, out of the fridge, it's got a lot of condensation on it, whether it has a date on it or not. But this is a fairly big beer. This is an 11.2 uh, fluid ounce Imperial Stout with coffee added, 12% alcohol. And uh, I don't see any kind of dating on it. It's standing out, but I will look a little closer when I come back. It is a monster beer, so the... Uh, the date is actually not critical, but I would like to know whether it was done in January of a year or December of that year or whatever. It would be nice to have that information. So that's just me. That's just me. Uh, this beer is going to keep for a long time, but it's got coffee added, and the coffee will fade over time. Uh, I've not actually sold a coffee beer and did a vertical of a fresh one and, and one that's been aged to see how much the coffee does fade over time. So that would be a nice experiment to do, and I may do that uh, at a later date. So we'll see. It won't be one of these beers, I can tell you that. Uh, <clears throat> I've, I've done spending my money on Evil Twins beers. Even though they, make some, they do make some really tasty uh, big beers, especially in the stouts and the barley wines and, and all that kind of stuff. But I uh, was not uh, pleased with what Jeffy's response was to me. So, like I said, I'll spend my money elsewhere. But I do appreciate Rico spending his hard-earned money and sending it to me to review. And I will keep an open mind on this. If it's, if it's wonderful, I will tell you that, guys. All right, let's get on with this. Uh, commercial description on this beer says, An apparel style with coffee added. Now, why did it do that? Back it up, Apple. 
says Imperial Stout with coffee added on pilgrimage on Mortal Craft Beer. We tripped on these heavenly coffee beans, threw them in, and created a damn good aroma. It's a thick fudge like body, pitch black color, and obviously only made in limited amounts. And the taste, furthermore, Jesus. Or Jesus, if you're in Mexico. <laughs> and that's not derogatory, guys. That's just, that's just a little humor. It's probably bad humor on top of that. All right, let's get on with this. Uh, 12 percenter says rotating availability, so I don't know how often he does this, or they do this, or whoever does this. Uh, food pranks for this style of beer, being uh, an imperial. She's a buttery brie gouda Havarti Swiss, and it goes well with your chocolate dishes, of course. Meat is beef, smoked meat, game, and grilled meat. Glass for the pint, back in the tumbler snifter. Oversized wine glass, my favorite glass today, the solid beer glass. It says here can be sold for long periods. Just remember, it's got coffee added, and that may fade over time. So, enough about that. Let's get the cap off this bad boy. And this is not a cheap beer. Most of his beers are fairly expensive, and it looks like this says $8.50 on it, which is a pricey beer for one. Of course, it's a 12 percenter. Just remember that. And like I said, they usually do a good job on these big beers. Not a very big hit. Very small hiss. Pitch black coming out of the bottle, guys. And I've been very impressed with what they do on these big beers. They do them very well. Uh, about a finger of head on this 11.2 fluid ounces, not 12. They short changing you on 8 fluid ounces being a smaller bottle and charging you just as much for a 12 ounce. Mm -hmm. Pitch black guys, about a finger of head, uh, a deep chocolatey covered head, or, or colored head I should say. There are a few big bubbles from that aggressive pour. Creamy bubbles around the outside. Good looking beer, it really is for a stout, imperial stout. Not getting any light at all. Pitch black. Let's get a nose on it. Rich roasted malt, got some coffee going on in there for sure. Maybe you get some dark fruit in there, some plum, dates, raisins, or figs. Hmm, smells very good. Kind of figured it would. Like I said, they do a really good job on these style of beers. They really do. Let's do it. Let's get it on. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Rico. Thank you, my brother. Very tasty. I'm not surprised because they really do a good job on these. Just a guy that's a brewer has a go to hell shitty attitude as far as I'm concerned. Of course I'm just one guy. He probably could care less. I'm just one guy, and I could too. I could care less. If you don't care what I got to think or to say, I'll spend my money somewhere else. Even though they do make some good beers. That is very tasty, guys. A lot of chocolatey coffee notes in there. A nice creamy mouthfeel. Very well made beer. It, it, it definitely is, guys. I'm telling you the truth. I'm straight up with you. Even though I've got a little disdain for this guy. He's, they do make some very tasty stouts. When I come back from the final chug, I'll look at the bottle a little closer and see if it's got any kind of dating on it. And, that, and that's the biggest thing. Uh, this guy's making a ton of money. And, you, and, and going from brewery to brewery to, for them to brew his beers. But yet, uh, a lot of them did, don't have any kind of dating on it at all. Not even a year. And I would like to see at least a year. Give us a vintage on, on this style of beer. So if we're going to buy multiple years so we can do a vintage and, and let us know. When you're producing a 12% Imperial Stout, this brick has sat on the shelf for a long, long time. And it'll still be kind of tasty. And like I said, the coffee may fade over time, but it's still going to keep for 12%. This beer's going to keep for a long, long time. 
and for us to know as consumers how long has it been on the shelf? Give us give us a minute. This was done in 2012, 2015, 2016, so we'll know. So, uh, don't want an indefinite shelf life on an Imperial Stout. Uh, even though it's not going to go bad, you might want to do a vertical. And how are you going to know if it doesn't have a date on the bottom? Bottom line. So, without rambling on, let me sip on this for a little bit and step outside on the deck and maybe smoke a, a punch bare knuckle cigar that seems to be my favorite uh, i mean uh, i get good consistency from those cigars and they go very well with these darker stouts and imperial stouts and uh, and it's a maduro wrapped cigar a very tasty cigar to uh, pair up with the style of beer and and you can have that before you can have this beer before dinner or during dinner with a stronger dish or even after dinner as a dessert beer it's not a big sweet beer like a barley wine would be or a beer that's been brewed with lactose but it is still a, a nice dessert beer if you're not into the sweeter beers so let's step out and sip on it for a little while let her have a uh, taste two or three and uh, we'll come back and see where this one ends up this seems to be a pretty, pretty impressive beer and i'm not surprised i'll be right back all right, guys, I'm back. Been sitting on it about 35, 40 minutes or so. Very tasty beer. Very nice. There is no dating on the bottle whatsoever. No vintage or month, day, or year, or whatever. Uh, that's the biggest problem I have with this. Uh, we need a vintage on the bottle. Uh, and like I told you earlier, I've got a little problem with the brewer on, on this one. I would not spend my money on these uh, little 11.2% uh, fluid ounce bottles when you can buy... Uh, a tastier beer in a 22 ounce bottle for pretty close to the same price uh, but they do make some tasty barley wines and, and imperial stouts no doubt about it they've got that figured out and with him uh, going and not having an actual brewery going from brewery to brewery having them produce their beers that would determine whether it had a date on or not if, if that brewery has a dating machine uh, uh, it would have a date on it and if it, they don't it, it won't so uh, uh, doesn't have a big overhead, uh, so uh, it, it pockets all his money as far as I'm concerned. Uh, got a problem with that guy, so I'm, you know, even even though it's a great beer, I would not spend my money on these beers. Uh, I'm not going to anymore. I'm not going to buy any more Evil Twin beers. But I do appreciate Rico spending his money on it and sending it to me for me to review, since I have not had this particular version. Great coffee uh, taste on this, some dark fruit in there, rich roasted malt. Uh, some bittersweet chocolate. Very nice. Very well made. I will give him that. And I made some very ugly comments uh, on that beer that I did earlier. And it was overcarbonated. And uh, I probably shouldn't have, but I did. And I'm not taking them back. Whenever I get a response from the brewer like that, like, oh well, instead of I'm sorry, or let me send you another one, or whatever. If you got that attitude, I got that. I got that attitude. So, final show. Very tasty. Very well made. Lacking a, a vintage on it, so we know what year it is. Can't give it to ten guys. Uh, it has no vintage on it, uh, but it is a very well made beer. Very tasty beer. Definitely worth picking up if you're into the Imperial Styles and you got deep pockets and you want to spend $8.50 for 11.2 ounce. That's not bourbon barrel aged. Very nice. Very nice. A lot of flavors going on with this beer. A, a good beer, like I said, other than the coffee fading over time that you could sell it for a little while. So, uh, for me, uh, I'll give us a 95, guys. Over to uh, Beer Advocate, they say 94 in the outstanding range. We're pretty close on the numbers there. 94 from them, 95 from me. And over to Rate Beer, they say 100 overall, 97 in the style. I'm not going there. Definitely not going there. It is an eight beer, though, guys. It's a very well-made beer. Uh, lacking the vintage. I would like to see a 2012, 2015, 2016, whatever it was put in the bottle. And uh, they decided they didn't want to do that. Or the brewery that he chose to brew this beer for him uh, doesn't have the capability of doing that. So, with that being said, that's all we're going to say about this. Uh, so, we got 100 from them, 95 from me, and a 94 from them. So, it's definitely an A beer, guys.
definitely worth picking up if you want to, like I said, spend your money on uh, on this beer because it, it is a tasty beer, no doubt about it. Uh, like I said, I'm just being honest with you, but uh, I'm not going to spend my money on it. Uh, I do appreciate Rico spending his on it and sending it to me, but uh, I think we could probably get just a good a beer and a 22 ounce or for pretty close to the same price, if not just a tad more, uh, for a non-bourbon barrel aged beer. So, very tasty, enjoyable beer, very nice, very well made. So, with that being said, if you've had this one from uh, uh, Evil Twin, they're on Moss Cafe Jesus, which I'm probably butchering up that title. Let me know what you think, and come on back tomorrow. Let's see if we can dig out of the fridge. Rico, thanks again, my brother. I do appreciate it. See y'all tomorrow.